when mankind was created, mankind was created perfect by a perfect being, supernatural being, the God Almighty. He created mankind in his own likeness, in his own being. And so mankind was created to do things in the way of perfection. Nothing was to go wrong with man. Nothing was to go inactive with man. Mankind was made to touch and bless. Mankind was made to speak and it be done. Adam became part of creation when God gave him a chance, an opportunity of a lifetime to give the names of all the creation. Mankind was made perfect with a perfect hand, perfect supernatural being that is God Almighty. But what really went wrong with mankind? What really went wrong with mankind? We never get satisfied. We never do things to the satisfaction. Man, today, we want to do things, but we never get enough time. We want to live longer life, but life, years are never there for us. We have limited time. Mankind is never satisfied. We want to be loved, but that love never forthcoming. We want to be appreciated, but no one is able to appreciate us enough to the limit which we needed. Man can desire peace, but we cannot get the peace. Man can desire success, but everything we do, halfway, we can never succeed. Man can require appreciation, but everywhere we go, in family, in workplaces, in the, in the market, in neighborhood, nobody is there to appreciate your effort. Man can desire things that, we can, that they cannot do. Why? The question is, why? The book is Matthew, chapter 12, verses 29. Jesus Christ called out Peter from the boat. So Peter got out of the boat. He says, Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. Peter walked out of the boat got out of the boat, walked on water, and came to Jesus. Three steps. He got out of the boat, walked on water, and came to Jesus. Now, if man can desire peace, then there is a comfort zone that man desires to get that peace, and that peace will never come to, in such an environment. Man desire good life. But I realize one thing, that there is a place, a territory on which we are in, and we are very much comfortable, but no peace will ever come to that zone. No success will ever come. However much we put effort, it will never come in such... Really, really, do we come to say we reach our apex, we reach our self-actualization? The book, the Bible, the book of Matthew 14 verses 29 is talking about a boat. The boat that the disciples got into so that they may cross the water bodies. The boat is there to give a safe sailing through the deep waters which always come with a lot of billows and challenges in life. The boat is only there for us to give us a sail through towards where Jesus is. The water on the flip side is the only problem that if at all we fear, our fear will always be coming from the water body. The water body brings out the tides that will be flipped being up and down, scaring us until we come out of the fear that we have towards the water body. I do not see us give, getting out of the boat. Until we step out of the boat, we cannot walk to Jesus. Until we put our foot on the water body, 
focusing only on Jesus, hearing the call that Jesus is saying, come, remember what Peter did say prior to that, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to where you are. And there was, in verse 29, Jesus said, come forth, come forth, Peter. And Peter gravely stepped out of the boat, started walking the first step, the second step, the third. And his focus deviated from Christ to the waters, deviated from Christ to himself. His focus deviated from Christ, the caller, Christ, the maker of the water body and mankind, Christ, the one who is stepping on the waters. Remember, the problems, the source of the problem is the water body. And Christ himself has stood on the water bodies. Christ has stood on the water bodies. And he asked us to come, walk, step on the same water body that I have already stepped on. Where is the fear coming in? It is a fear that is coming from within to without. We are only sinking with our body into the water bodies because the fear has come from within. Come until we move out of the boat, we will never have a chance to reach Christ. We will hear the call of Jesus Christ. We will have the urge to step out and walk by the comfortability that the boat is providing us. Oh, brethren, might look so sweet that we just feel like, how can we leave these goodies? Are we really going to get these goodies as along the path towards Jesus Christ? So many families, so many young men, so many scholars have started and ended up without finishing the project. We are always born successful generation, but the generation of today is never successful. We are dependent of people who are also dependent of others. How, when will we be successful in the things we do when we are still dependent? We are dependent of money that we make. And once your uncle, your brother, your sister, your aunt, everybody around and about you is having more money compared to yours, then you will be feeling at that particular moment that this man, this woman is better than I. And I need to be loyal to this one because I can rely on him. I can rely on her. Hence, loyalty. Whatever I am asked to do, wherever I am asked to go, I will go. Remember, all this will be done within the boat circumference. The boat is too rigid. The boat is small. The water body is big. But the one who steps on the waters is the maker. He can synchronize, bring in the water bodies one more time and leave the dry land. He is the one who made the expanse of the waters. He can re-de-expanse the water body one more time. Why? Do we have fear after we've heard the call of the one who made us in his likeness? Why do our children fail? They fail because their morals have been overtaken by the nude life, nude things that they will watch from the media. Somebody is making up his own or her own things that are not godly. Placing in the media, we get glued on the media. Watching things that do not add any morality. Instead, it takes out the good morals and brings in the immorality. Hence the bad character trait in the upcoming generation. Until 
we step out of our comfort zone, we will never make it. I am here to remind you, friends, I am here to remind you that until you get out of the dependency point, until you get out of leaning on other people, stand up, start doing something, however small it is, depend on yourself and only ask God for direction and your success is just a few steps away from the shore. I am only here to remind you of your potentiality, the potentiality that is coming by virtue of your faith in God. Believe in the scriptures, read and walk the words. I tell you, children of God, you will make it. Students, you can be what you want to be in life as long as you maintain the course. Unless and until you maintain the focus, Peter failed in maintaining the focus towards Christ, the one who called him out of the boat. What do you want in life? What do you want to be in life? The strikes that happen from one school to another, from one institution to another, are not done by animals, but they are done by human beings. But how did you come to make the student body of that institution? You came alone. Why should one student think better than the other? To misadvise. And the students who are being misadvised follow suit. It's because they think the student advice huh, is better than us. And so they become dependent on a student with tinted ill morals. Don't you think that you also have your own morals? I am here to uh, discourage you from thinking little and encourage you from thinking into thinking big. You can also make a mammoth follower from the same student. Bring out an idea, let them follow you because you have the potentiality to speak and you do as you've spoken. Until we move out of the boat, Good potential parents let their children go and school because they are not able economically. Who told you that you are not able economically? Our forefathers, great grandfathers, great grandparents did not have a job. The white collar job was never there. Even the blue collar job. But they tilted their own land. They made out the produce and sold. They bought it, the rare cattle, the rare chicken. They went in every chore that would make them make money. Effort is never something that is given. Effort is not warranted. It is worked for. You have the power to work it out. You have the potentiality to stand and say, it is enough for me. It is enough. Enough is enough. I am going to walk out of my comfort zone. Enough with the goodies. Enough with begging every time you kneel and begging. People need to also come and kneel as you give forth. Because blessed is the hand that giveth. Don't you also need that blessing? Everybody need that blessing. Thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity to identify the potentiality in ourselves. And we are not going to relent and give up. But we've realized, however little the steps were from the board that Peter did, that effort was very remarkable and it had to be chronicled in the Holy Scriptures of God. Against the rest of the disciples, 
Peter stepped out of the comfort boat against the fear that the rest of the disciples had. Peter at one moment for three steps suspended his fear. And so for the few seconds that Peter suspended the fear, because this fear had to recur after the third step, he had to cry out, however long, however much, however huge your fear is, you will always cry to Christ and he will always extend his hand to pick you out because you showed some little courage. He says, I only need, if only you would have as little as a master sigh, a master seed, faith. Come, let us reason together. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 18, he reasons out with those people who come having nothing and only waiting to hear from the one who created them in, their, in his own image. Listen to what the Spirit speaks with you while you are alone at night, while you are wandering along the street, while you are alone, while you are with your family. Listen to the call of a divine voice. He will always speak with you. He will always speak to uphold you. He will always speak to give you direction. You are not less of those other people who have made it in life. In Africa, every morning, an antelope has to wake up and sprint so fast. And in the same, same Africa, a leopard, every morning, when it wakes up, it will sprint so fast, lest it loses the prey. While the antelope will always be sprinting so fast, lest it is prayed. And so it doesn't matter whether you are an antelope or a leopard, the basic denominatoral matter in life is both must be running. You must be running your course. You know what you need in life. Run that course. Go for it. Do it because you have the power and the potentiality to do it. Do it. If it is a business, you dream of a supermarket. You can never start a supermarket if you don't have that huge amount. But did you know the items you walk to buy in supermarket? As little as 15 shillings item, Kenyan shillings, has been nicely arranged in the shelves. It therefore means what? As long as I am having a little money, I can start bringing this 15 shillings item slowly by slowly. Slowly by slowly. And I want to give you a tip. I did this. It's a practical testimony. You don't have enough money. You have very little that can never make ends meet. Go back to your homework. Do this. This is a test. Do it. Work so hard. Bring home. If you are getting 3,000 shillings per month in Kenya, even though it has always been raised, the list should be around 11, 12,000. Let's bring it to 10,000 per month. Take 1,000 only. Make all your budget to be up to a maximum of 9,000. Take 1,000. Throw it into an account that have no withdrawal transaction. Every month. Every month. 1,000. If I divide 1,000 by 30 days, 
then you realize 1,000 divided by 30 days is around 330 per day. 30 shillings. Around, not exact. In one year, you will be having your 12,000 untouched. Because in Kenya, our system is month end payment. Unless it's a casual where you are paid per day. But even if it is per day, you can even make it a routine 100 shillings every day. In fact, if you make it 100 shillings every day, you are a shopkeeper. You spare 100 shillings every day. You are a boda boda rider. 100 shillings every day. You are a tuk tuk, a driver, or saloonist, kinyosi. 100 shillings every day. You drop it into a non withdrawal transaction account, whether it is an MFI or a commercial bank, but you don't withdraw it. By the end of the month, you will be having 3,000. 3,000, by the end of 10 months, you will be having 30,000. 30,000, by the end of the year, you will be having 36,000. 36,000, one year. The second year, you repeat the same, another 36,000. The third year, you another 36,000. You work relentlessly, we do not think of anything else, but you work. By the end of your 10 year investment, you will be talking of 360,000. This is something I did. When I was getting money that nobody would imagine, of me by able to buy even a bicycle. And I decided to go and invest this. In building a house, you can do it. It might take you longer than how a rich man would be doing it. But by the end of the day, you will all be at par because of your potentiality. Believe in God. Believe in yourself. Have faith in God. Have faith in yourself. Before you have faith, you must have faith in yourself. How can you have faith in God Almighty when you yourself don't even understand yourself? Understand yourself. Have faith in yourself. Know very well that I am made by God himself. I am not less than anybody else. I have the potentiality like anybody else. I can be whatever I want to be. I am what I say I am and I will be because God says so and you will be. Children of God, this is the faith that everybody must be having. So many Successful men and women within the globe had the same spirit and they made it. You can make it in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? I want to thank you, Lord, this particular day for reminding us, Lord, that until we step out of the boat, until we step out of our comfort zone, step out of your comfort zone, lest you want to lose everything. Father, I want to thank you this particular day. And I want to thank you and adore your name. For you've given us the mind to think. And you reminded us on how majestically you made us to be a reflex of what and who you are. Thank you now and forevermore. Thank you today. Thank you tomorrow. Thank you for the past. And may thy name be exhausted. And may your name be exalted. And may the name be uplifted in the whole globe. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. And all of us say, Amen. And Amen. And Amen. Children of God, may the good Lord of heaven continue guiding you, protecting you, showing you the way for the boat. 
might appear safe, but it's very temporal. Because it is too rigid with life, we must focus only on Jesus. And by faith in Jesus Christ, believe me, children of God, we will have the power to step out of our comfort zone. Your daddy will never provide for you for, for good. A time will reach when your daddy shall have reached the apex and will have to go down on the other side of the ladder. It will turn around for us to give help and assistance to our old folks. How will we make it? if we continue relying on them up to our adulthood. It is our responsibility. Lest we want to perish with endless lamentation. Oh, I cannot be do, I can do this. Oh, me, I am cursed. Oh, me, I'm only seen as useless. Oh, me, I cannot do this. Oh, me, I did not get a job. Please. It is no longer an age for lamentation, but it's an age of lamentation, of, of action. It is our duty. It is our responsibility. Let us come out of our comfort zone. And it will always happen according to our wish and will. Because we are the sons and daughters of the I am whom I am. He is the provider. He is the owner of the silver and gold. And any child who goes to him and asks, Daddy, I need this. He will surely provide. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Be blessed. Go out. Explore your potentiality. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.